welcome to Adventure's Edge Session Zero. Woohoo! This is Don, <laughs> and we are all at the table. Yay! For what is our actual first recording session? Should I not be interrupting you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to work those kinks out, but welcome. So, again, hopefully by now you've already listened to the first episodes and you kind of know our voices because we're going to be dropping this a little later on in the season, but this is our session zero, and we're going to work through our characters and get the background details worked out today. So at the table, we'll do some quick introductions. Starting to my left, we have... Hi, I'm Rochelle. Welcome, Rochelle. Uh, hi, I'm Glow. And I'm Matt. Jeff. And Thad. All right, the crew is here. Everybody's excited. We're in the new space. And we're just going to dive right in. So in a previous recording... We've, we've already discussed what a session zero is, but today we're going to do some background information. Everybody's already shown up today with some characters where they already did some, you know, some pre-recording discussions, picked out some character types and have shown up at the table with a character mostly complete, if not all the way complete. And what we're going to do now is talk about who they are, why they're here and how they know each other so that when we start our session one, we can get going. So. We could do roundtable, or if anybody's excited to go first, who who wants to talk about their character? Or don't ever. Why? I don't. <laughs> you all look at us. <laughs> I know. I know. Right. My no, expectation is. contact Rochelle. No, I, I'm like that. I'm always like, like, Thad's always ready to go. Like, I'm like. I am, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lead us off. Well, I'm Darun. Uh, Darun Stonebreaker. I am a dwarf. Um. I'm a little bit tall for a dwarf, as I stand at 4'7". I've got a beard, even though some people in this world wouldn't have dwarfs with beards. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I come from the western side of Tellus, and I grew up, my, like most dwarfs, fighters, but I don't have much of a uh, taste for blood. So I told my elders and my father, and they sent me away to join a certain group called the Earth Elders. And there I learned the arts of taking care of the old artifacts and monoliths, temples, ruins that create magic in this world. We are often seen as a little bit odd because we are not social butterflies. But um, I nonetheless learned, and uh, I have keen skills in stone cutting and architecture, and I help rebuild these ley lines. And I, my companion, although Earth Elders a lot of times do not have the small groups, uh, but uh, my companion is Kodra. She was left behind by her pack after she got injured against a giant elk. So she just kept following me around until I said, you know what, I'll share some of my food with you. And the rest was, just, I have, my hair is locked in clay, so I have what you would consider dreadlocks, but I use clay to keep them formed because I am of the earth, like are many of our kind. And I will go back to the Earth once my adventures are done. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> Derun. De Derun. You want to put a little R in there? Derun. Derun. And I like the arts Derun. of the Druidic. Derun. Derun. What kind of animal is? Oh, Kodra, she's a black wolf. She's a mm. black wolf. Nice. She's very kind. She doesn't always listen to me, so I apologize in advance. Awesome. I just realized I got rid of the total Sean Connery thing, but we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I imagine part of what we're doing right, today is right. working out. You'll hear our voices differently. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, start in, we'll try to nail those down as much as we can today. I, I, we'll see how that goes. Well, since you started us off, let's just go counterclockwise. That way... Oh. We have less finger pointing. <laughs> sure. It'll be less intimidating for the rest of the table. Um, so, um, well, my character, well, my character, or do we want to? 
Let's just yeah. yeah like, let's, you're like, Jeff. You're Jeff. As a human, have Jeff as a human. <laughs> I'm just, just gonna play me. <laughs> 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 yeah. All my stats are real low though. <laughs> uh, no, so I would be Tommy Scanderson. People call me Wait. Tommy Gunn. Tom. That was Gunderson. Yeah, that's what I say. Oh, Tommy Scanderson. Oh, Thomas. Gunderson. Right. You kind of like rolled that all together. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just went right for it. Okay. So <laughs> people call me Tommy Gunn. Right? <laughs> so I'm a young man, 6'3, right? 185. And uh, I work on the fishing boats of the city that we all live in. Um, I work and spent my time as an exchange agent. So I know a bit of language because, as I always say, there's a lot of pretty faces in the world, and I want to be able to talk with them, right? So I got a gift at a gab, and, uh, you know, just making this way in my world as as best as possible. So uh, when the need calls for it, I'll fight with my trident and then uh, my brass knuckles. I like to call Mama as my brass knuckles, so they sing you a lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> Again, when the occasion calls for it. I am so. watching an episode of Peaky Blinders. <laughs> it's as close <laughs> as I can get, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty loyal to my friends, but uh, not necessarily loyal to the law. But I'll do what it takes. And it's... Uh, that's the story of Tommy. Well, welcome, Tommy. Brilliant. Tom- Tommy, does your trident have a name? Uh, no, it's more of like a tool to trade, okay. right? Because I'm a fisherman. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's just like what I got with me. But the brass knuckles have a special place. In- oh, mama. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and as uh, a friend of mine said, you know, uh, I might talk with them, the brass knuckles. And then that way, Mama said, knock you out, kind of thing. Ah, oh, Mama said, knock you out. I like it. Yeah. It's great. I can feel the contempt from our neighbors <laughs> at the table. <laughs> I see no trouble with this at all. <laughs> Mama's good when they want to go to sleep. We won't, we won't Try find ourselves. You need to make a point. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> I like it. All right, well, thank, thanks, Tommy. Good to have you back, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. So, uh, who did you bring to the table? Um, I am bringing Trunk. Um, he is uh, a troll who grew up where he doesn't belong. Um, abandoned, seemingly, as a kid uh, in the neighboring forest, raised by Fay. Um, he's got uh, a rather child's heart. Uh, he knows good people should. Have good things and bad people. Well, you know, just gotta find uh find out where their teeth is and and take them out sometime. Um, he's a cleric. Um, he's probably taller. <laughs> <laughs> the side. I was so happy to hear those. I got, I got some healing skills. Uh-huh. So, w- w- but this I, group I, just get ready to be busy. I hear your, your <laughs> sigh of relief. I said cleric, not healer. Oh, no. He's not that kind of cleric. Not that kind of cleric. (laughs) Don't worry. Trunk's point in life is uh, to bring restoration to people, whether that is peace of mind, uh, healing injuries indeed, um, and otherwise just uh, helping them live the, the fullest joy that they need in life. And for people who want to repress that joy, well, that's where we get punching. Ooh, repressing. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Trunk. That's so much easier to say. <laughs> must be practicing Derun. You, you don't have to put the R in there, but... Uh, I will Derun. try. Derun. 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 of what yeah. Tommy is going to refer to you as, because it's not going to be that. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not D. Hey. Hello, JD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> D man. Uh, <laughs> What'd you oh, say? I've been called worse. Oh, been called worse. 
Awesome. All right. Well, awesome. Welcome, Trunk. Uh, Glow, who did you bring to the table today? All right. Um, well, I brought a Bramble. Um, Bramble uh, is a bard and a fawn. Um, he's he's kind of tall for a fawn. He's like 5'3", so nothing crazy, but a little tall. Um, yeah, and so he, he lives in the forest with the other fae. And he is an entertainer. Um, so a lot of his skills he knows um, because he, he likes to entertain. And that's kind of his role in the community is he keeps things interesting. Um, so he fights um, mostly with uh, throwing knives, um, which is a skill that was picked up from basically using it as a party trick. Yeah. Nice. All right. Anything else you want to share, Bramble? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. So how does Bramble entertain? Um, playing instruments mostly. Um, yeah. He he knows a couple instruments, but he mostly plays the lute. Uh, yeah, he also can sing, but yeah. Bard's gonna bard. Bard's gonna bard. M- multi-talented. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. Don't you got can't put them in a box. No. There's there's a lot of things they, they won't let you. Any dancing? Oh, not really. But oh, oh, <laughs> not that kind of. Not, not, not that. Kind. <laughs> you know, no, no. I don't know. There might be. Just when you need the. Don't know profession. where we're going with entertainer and dancer. Yeah. No. With with the hooves, it's a little. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a little you might hard. Have like a river dance kind of thing. Yeah. yeah there you yeah. go. A tap dance. I was hoping for the triple threat. Yeah. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I see, I see. So there's lots of lots of time. Yeah. This is only session zero. True. I mean, we're true. Good. Well, he's just trading off the dancing for the stabbing. So mm-hmm. that's yeah, maybe that's part of the triple threat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All well, right. I actually want to back up real quick oh. to trunk. Sorry about okay. that. I know you're so excited. Uh description. Like how big is trunk? What does, oh, it, what does it look like? Right. Um, so Trunk is, uh, just, just a little guy, uh, about seven foot four, mm. about 380 pounds or so. Um, so, uh, our fellow Fae are not going to be helping me up, climbing up any, any walls at all. Um, let's see. I don't know if any of us is going to help you up climbing <laughs> walls. Uh, no, no. Uh, let's just hope that he doesn't stumble. Yeah. Um, uh, bright green eyes, brown hair, uh, kind of horns sticking out the side of his head. Um, a very kind of slack jawed, nice, but real dumb kind of expression on his face at pretty much all times. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. And wait, I need to know, is Tommy intimidated by that height? Um, Tommy's certainly not that tall. But uh, no, no, Tommy's, he's got a pretty good self. Like he's, self. he's a confident, he's a oh, confident yeah. dude. He doesn't care. Yeah. No. All right. All right, all right. Yeah, he'll be all right. All right, Rochelle, who did you bring to the table today? So- <laughs> now it all depends on how strong he is. <laughs> right. When he does something really tall. cool, then he'll be like, and then he'll be like, oh, <laughs> oh, like, oh <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to be playing Zinnia Mosswing, who is a fairy. A tiny fairy, a teeny tiny fairy. (laughs) So, um, very proud of her 12 and a half inch height, um, (laughs) with purple eyes and really wild green hair, like untamable curls going everywhere and, um, green wings and, uh, yeah, capable of flight with fairy dust. And also happens to be a um, novice uh, wizard. And we'll get into our backstories shortly, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted everybody to get a sense of who who you are. And actually, for my own benefit, making some notes here. And I have a familiar, uh, a fox named Nipper, who, um, because I am tiny, I will, when I'm not flying will be able to ride. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And Nipper is like a large red fox. Yes, yes. Well, a medium 
imagine her just like <clears throat> no, not even a medium, a small. Yeah, yeah, Mc, Mc, I, well, holding on to I, it right there. Yes, but when I say large, large, like large, a large breed fox, like a, a Arctic fox, but uh, Arctic here. foxes are small. Or gray fox. Gray sorry. fox, yeah. But it's a so a it's still a, a small creature. Well, it's a red fox. It's just a large, large for a red fox. Large for a red fox. Small. Yes, a bit relevant. Yes, relative in size to me is large, but yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, that is our party. Wow. The size difference from you guys, yes, <laughs> seven <laughs> blue full <laughs> range. Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> well, line line you up in a row and you cover. Yeah, none nope. of us are the same height, even close to it. Nope, nope. that is actually kind of amazing. And Trunk has never been jealous watching how fun it is to ride a fox. He's never thought about it once, <laughs> not no. even once. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Trunk is compelling. large enough. That the fox could ride you and Zinnia can ride the fox. Yeah. <laughs> this has almost certainly occurred. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds awesome. This is going to be, it sounds like a lot of fun. So I, hopefully you kind of all have, you know, maybe read a little bit of the, the backstory stuff I gave you, uh, for people listening to this, I will be sharing links out if. You want to read through if that's your sort of thing. There's going to be information about the world. It is never going to be a requirement, obviously. So what we're going to do now is talk about, we know who you are, but how you came to be here and possibly if or how you will know each other. So we're going to be picking up in the town of Raven Rock, which uh, sits on a small river near a large forest called the Hollowwood which is, it's a very magical forest known to have fae in it. And I imagine that is probably where many of you fae people have lived or still do live. So it is convenient that we already had this in place. It's kind of funny because obviously I didn't know what everybody was making, but preparing the adventure, like there were going to be fae things and sure enough, they're in the party. So that's fun. So. We've kind of already talked about, I've, I've talked to a few of you separately about some of your backstories, but what we do now is like, let's figure out um, maybe a little bit of how you would know each other. So we'll, we'll do this the other way around now. So obviously, Rochelle, you just introduced Zinnia to us and you said you're a fledgling wizard. Yes. And obviously from the Hollywood. Yes. Um, what brought you to the lovely town of Raven Rock? All right, so let me see if I can get this voice. <clears throat> okay, so I was just doing my, you know, usual out in the woods kind of, you know. I, I've always loved plants and the animals, and I was out, you know, investigating some of the, um, some of the, the mushrooms in the forest and just trying to discern some different uses. And then there was this old man out there walking around and he was clearly looking for something. And I, I clearly know probably a lot more than he does about what's in that, what's in the, um, what's the name of my forest again? Hollowood. Hollowood. I should write that down. You humans and there's, and your silly names. Um, Hollowood. I clearly know much more about the Hollywood, Hollowood than, than he did. So I asked him, you know, well, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? And he didn't, he did, didn't want to answer me, but I'm like, I can help you. I can help you. And he's finally told me what he was looking for, and I helped him find it. And then he wouldn't tell me what he wanted it for. So I followed him home, and I, I just kept asking him questions. And finally, he relented and told me what he was doing. And I just stayed around for a long time, and I learned how to be a wizard from him. And then he told me that he had taught me everything he knew, and he sent me on my way. And then I went into the forest again. And I met um, my new best friend and her name. I can't remember what's her name. Brina. Brina. I need to write that down too. (laughs) Brina. What was, so did you already come, did you already have a name for the wizard? Because otherwise (laughs) I will just, I will generate one here. Okay. Generate a name for my wizard friend. How does Godfrey sound? Sure. I don't care. All right. Human names. I don't care. (laughs) All right. So there is a wizard Godfrey who lives. Probably in a cottage somewhere, um, a little outside of town, maybe in a tower. All right, cool. All right, Karen, continue on. So you followed, you, you saw Brina. Yes, and Brina was wonderful. 
And then um, I started teaching her how, you know, how to speak Fae. And um, she was just, you know, or the Fae language, but. Pythia. Pit, yeah, Pythian. And so, and um, she was just delightful. You, you know, Brina. Yes. Oh, I do. I do. Who, who is it? He's oh, me his, his, <laughs> yeah. He said he's seen a lot of at. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> from uh, well, I was I'm sorry. I was distracted. There there was a little bit of um. There was a little noise that I was trying to hone in on and to see if there was something that somebody was doing that was causing it. It was just like was it that? No, it was kind of a little like, a, like a, an abrasive noise. I don't hear it now. Okay. 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 So that, right? sorry. Me going on my. <clears throat> No, no. Brina. 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 Yeah, by the way, Tommy, maybe we should have started with you, but we didn't. Um, <laughs> by the way, you have a younger sister. We're going to get to her right now. Of course I do. Her name is Brina. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about her. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Brina. You can't tell me about my little sister. <laughs> well, you've known her her whole life, not your whole life, her whole life. That, that, yeah, that, yeah, that tracks. Yes. So- and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with that a little bit too because I was I I was doing a little story building. Oh. Um, and this is probably something that not everybody knows, but Tommy should know because he was alive. Uh, she was also a foundling. Oh. Okay. And your parents adopted her. Yeah, but that's like a secret. It's kind of so it's kind of a secret. Don't like right. let that get out. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Anyway. So she actually might not even know that either. <gasps> in fact, I like that. So in which case, neither does. Sorry. I don't know that. No. You don't know that. But Brina, she's just so fun and she's so funny. And we would make, you know, flower um, crowns. And I just started, you know, and she would come and visit me in the forest every day. And then eventually I was just like, she's like, oh, you should come home to my house. And so I followed her home. And <gasps> I saw her older brother, Tommy. That's me. <laughs> and he is just wonderful. And so then I moved in. And so now I live with Brina at her house, and I just do things around the house with her, and then we go and play in the forest, and it's just been great ever since. And nobody else knows you're there. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah. Not, not, definitely not Tommy. No, and, um, you know... Nipper comes and goes. He's very good at hiding. I don't know how long it's been now. I'm not very good at time. So the fun part there, since you you said you were teaching Brina Pythia. Yes. And I know when I was talking to Jeff and we're working on his languages, I, I clued you yeah. in on a little bit that uh, so Brina like started making up this little language. And mm -hmm. she taught, she, she, this is, is one of your starting languages because you're apparently a, quite the expert linguist. I am. Um, so she started teaching this funny little language and it seemed really like she was spending a lot of time making it up. But you've learned this language from her thinking the whole time it's just. It's I'm, just a language between me and her. Yeah. Unbeknownst <laughs> <laughs> that in fact it is a fey language. Okay. Um, and maybe that's even why. Maybe you've encouraged that so so that Tommy's like learning it and probably super exciting. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and and Brina is really young, so I'm thinking right now she's probably like seven or eight. I don't know. She's just a great playmate though. She's so fun. I can't wait to be till we're all just one big happy family. <laughs> all right. So we How long do humans live? <laughs> well, the the they can they can live up to be you know around a hundred. They're 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 pretty comparable to regular like you know humans. It helps us relate to them. So, but they live much longer. Mm. But you're probably less aware of that. Time is a construct of fate. Mm. Either way, magic can solve anything. <laughs> 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 So, so that is going to be your tie to Tommy, <clears throat> but I'm thinking you also have some ties to our other Fae, at least tangentially. So we do have some other Fae here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about 
glow and bramble. And let's start by, well, tell us a little bit more. So you're from the forest. Yes. Are you imagining that you have moved into the city or that you at this whole time have just been living nearby in the forest? Um, This whole time I've just been in the forest. All right. I know Bramble, though. Oh, of course. I mean, Bramble sounds like quite the entertainer. Yes. And and we uh, we grew up together. Bramble's so. funny. Yeah, I know I know Zinnia very well. All right. So you guys obviously have that tie. Um that does mean just so you know when we record session 1, y- you won't come in right away. You're going to have a delay. I I hate to do that. I like to get people like into it, but I think that there's going to be a little delay while they go get you. Yeah, I figured. And I have some I have some ideas of, of why they would go get you. Okay, so you've got, uh, there's a community, right? I mean, yes. T- tell us, do you, do you want to, do you have some thoughts on what that looks like? Have you... I mean, it's just like, um, we, we're we all one big happy family. You know, we have we have our, you know, separate families, but it's a very community-driven area. Um, so there's a lot of get-togethers. Um, we often eat meals together, um, celebrate together. And that's that's where my my expertise as a performer comes in. Is uh, during many of those gatherings, I I entertain. Yeah, hear the faith throw great parties. Yes. Nice. So, do you think you have some contacts from the city? I mean, do I mean? So there are there's obviously hunters and and woodsmen and people that do go into the forest. There is a whole logging camp, which kind of creates this awkward sort of thing, um, a bit north of the river, where the, they are doing logging that the Fae, you know, maybe interfere with or maybe kind of direct or maybe maybe protect trees from time to time. But they would definitely know the fair there. Like, there's no question, people know the fair there. Yeah, no, I've I've interacted with humans before. Um, I don't go out of my way to interact, with, but I've I've met some humans in the past. Okay. I think you should start. I definitely think you should start. Like, I don't know, messing with them. It's fun. I I may try that. <laughs> I definitely have the skills to to mess with them. I mean, some humans are fun to just befriend, and some are fun to mess with. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so we so we have an idea where you're going to be. You're hanging out in the forest, you're chilling, and you probably have a a, a some specialty knowledge of the forest. Yes, yes. Um. So any 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 actions or or quests into the forest, they could readily run into you, and and your old friend Zinnia should have no problem in like, hey. So we don't want to role play that right now, but if that came up. Like you guys are, are BFFs. Yeah. Okay. All right. I I definitely like them better than their friend, um, Birch, and you. <laughs> um, it is it is a a bit awkward since I don't know where she is right now. Um, she just kind of up and left, but 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 she does that. Yeah. Like, no, that's that's pretty so that typical. That is of like, her. yeah, she latches onto somebody and will disappear for six months, and then come back with these crazy stories of of hey, there was this wizard, and now I'm a magic user. Yes. And then, yes. yeah, shiny things are yeah. Who knows where she'll be? Yep. Uh, and so I'm sorry. Who was? But who's who are Birch and you? Some of some of Bramble's um, other other fawn friends. Other fawn yeah. friends. Okay. All right, Birch, and and that's E W E. No, no, no. Der, like wood. <laughs> like, yeah, I like see what tree. you did there. Yeah. A little slow on the uptake. Yeah, Y E W. Got it. You. Yeah, Birch and you. Mm-hmm. Hey, you. I'm glad you did not opt to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Anything else you want to add to that? Do you think the rest will kind of come out through through the story? Yeah, I think so. I think that is. That is, that needs to be shared right now. All right, then we have our next fake connection, Trunk. I mean, speaking of fake characters who are clearly 100% fey, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Trunk, and uh, I mean, 
Can you guess why I'm named that way? Because you're drunk. Because you're tall. No, it's because I was found right over there by that tree. Ooh. Ah. Um, born right here in the forest, probably. Maybe. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a fairy. And, uh, what well, kind of? I'm also a troll, but, uh, you know, like a fairy troll. Like, like I'm both. And, um, I don't know, like, 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 uh, uh, like Bramble said, we're all kind of a community, so I have a lot of different moms and dads. They all kind of trade me off, depending. Except for Auntie, she's always around. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy living here in the Hollywood. Got happiness in my heart and light in my smile. And just like all the rest of the fairies, I can feel the, the, the some other lands. They, they's in me somewhere, I think. They, some of them talk about missing it, but... It's, it brings them some sadness sometimes. So, one of these days, you know, when I'm done fairy and the fairies <laughs> around, I'll, uh, you know, I'll go find some other lands and, and bring them home. And then all the fairies can be happy again. And <laughs> i got a friend. I see her every morning in the dawn of the sun. And she talks to me a little bit and teaches me how to do things. And so sometimes I say nice, gentle words to people and then they feel good. Their sadness goes away. And sometimes, you know, if they trip and fall and get stuck with all sorts of pinchers and whatnot, well, then those go away too. And she tells me that I need to go somewhere soon. And that's kind of scary because, you know, I stand right over there by that trunk. That by that tree, that's kind of where I live. And uh, I don't know what it's going to be like to leave and go somewhere else, but I think it's coming. I think it's going to come soon. So do you imagine Trunk has also basically stayed in the forest and not moved in? Like you're, you're, you've, you're still in the, the fake community pretty much. In- oh, completely. Yeah. Um, Trunk was probably deposited. <laughs> uh, here in the woods as a fae foundling, um, somewhere around two years old or so. Uh, how he got there, why he got there, that's unknown, certainly to Trunk. Um, uh, I do want to throw, since you were deposited and by a tree, this, will, this is going to tie in. And you probably haven't been back, but uh, the story is you were found by the, the, the big tree in the heart of the forest. But people don't go there much anymore because there's like this darkness that has crept in and the fae just they're not comfortable there so there's the that would be just an anecdote that you would have heard that you oh yeah you were found in the heart of the forest and that kind of adds to this little mystery wow sounds like i gotta go fix that too then (laughs) all right um all right so then you would clearly know well probably both these fae definitely outsiders I mean, being um, that I'm a seven foot four foot fa- <laughs> seven foot four inch tall fairy, I'm pretty sure everybody in the community is at least. Uh, you, yeah, you would be quite the anomaly. <laughs> Definitely, uh, uh, yeah, fun at parties. Also, I don't really fit in the buildings much, but hey, yeah. Well, yeah. Definitely not the the one the little fairy uh, the fairy your little fairy houses that are like way up in the trees. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure that you have. You probably have a, I don't know, some sort of little home or large home that you just fit into. Something. I, I, I imagine throughout the, the years that I've been here, the various adopted family I've had have helped to construct something. Yeah. I certainly have no skill for it. It's like yeah. a massive lean, too. It does, <laughs> it does lean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I go to it, so. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a good name. Okay. So we, we so we have a pretty solid connection on the left side of the table here and then we've got a cross connection between uh, unbeknownst to uh to Tommy <laughs> um between uh, Zinnia and Tommy. So Tommy uh yeah, so I would imagine Tommy uh would have lived in Raven Rock his whole life. And uh, he, some of these things have changed. 
in my backstory. <laughs> so I have to kind of, um, he would have, uh, gotten a job as, as a fisherman fairly early in his life. Um, he's always been kind of the black sheep of his family. Um, just because he's been in near constant legal and law-based trouble. Um, but being fairly smart and having some natural athletic gifts, he would have done really well on uh, the boats. So he's been kind of promoted there uh, as an exchange agent to speak with the Otic people in the area. Um, because again, he's got the gift of gab, as he would say. Nice. Um, and recently, uh, life has been going fairly well for Tommy, uh, with the exception of his ever present, fairly annoying sister and her constant need to make up imaginary friends and languages and things. Um, but he's very attached to his younger sister and he would do anything to, to help her, um, and he doesn't, to him, her being a foundling is irrelevant. It's his sister just as much as if she had been born to the family. Now, does, does Tommy actually still live at home then? Um, I mean, I suppose that may have changed. Um, but I, I have in his backstory that he does not. He actually has his own apartment that his uh, sister comes and sees him at very frequently. Okay. I'm just thinking how it ties in, because you, you would probably, I mean, you would probably go also to their house too, or you? Um, well, originally he was going to be that much of a black sheep that he wasn't really going to be oh. invited back home. Oh. Um, but, but we can, we can, we can wreck on that. I mean, if you're if you're okay having at least, uh, you know, may, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe not the best relationship, but it's gonna be a very tense relationship yeah. because they all have been upstanding like business people in the area. Um, yeah, uh, there I was, had them owning a bar. I think that they were the owners of the Howling Hound, which is okay. the main tavern inn in town. Okay. Yeah. So they have a fairly contentious relationship, although. Lately, it's kind of been a little bit better because he's somewhat successful in his in his recent endeavors. All right, so maybe you have a uh, you know weekly family dinner where you go go see Brina and, and yeah, and it's mostly arranged just so I can see Brina. Yeah, because she is a sweetheart. Okay, I like it, and I can't imagine that with especially Fey influence. A rapscallion like Brina wouldn't be sneaking away from home to visit her brother anyway. Yeah, I'm thinking that she's just not not a not definitely not a troublemaker, but she's a free spirit. Well, if she is a trouble troublemaker, she got it from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she probably she probably comes down and also like to what likes to watch the people on the boats and things. Yeah. Okay. And he would show off, Tommy would show off for his little sister too, like if she was watching. But, oh yeah, because he's kind of a show off. I like it. Okay, all right. So I'm 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 seeing how we're gonna we're gonna come together in the story once I drop the story on you. It's making sense. So I can already see the camera is probably gonna start on Tommy, and then we'll snowball things together. But let's then talk about this enigmatic <laughs> Derun. Derun. So usually I've been thinking about different voices. And the reason why I did the Sean Connery idea was because to get him a character, I say, Tosh me. Don't you tell the elf. But, you know, maybe that's a little bit too on the nose. So <clears throat> kind of going with you, what are the names of the mountains um, north here of Raven Rock? North. Yeah. Oh, you're asking me. You're asking yeah. me what the names are. Because I don't see. Um, I'm, I'm on, you know. World Anvil, I, I see mountains. Well, here. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's an kind of where those foothills there, north of Raven Rock, that's where I imagine I'm from originally. It's a village, but I've spent plenty of time in Raven Rock. 
All right. Well, Wrong. tell you what, we'll, if this helps you, um, I changed the map so you can see Shepherd's Vale. So they are, oh, what are they called? Oh my goodness. The, are they, I think they're the dragon's teeth. Hold on. Are they just called the mountains? No, they have a name. They do have a name, 100%. Is it Steve? Knowing humans, they're just called the Hollow Hills. Uh, oh, yeah. Before okay. the humans, though. All right. I will update the map because I didn't label it, and it is... Yes. So, so what, what about them? So, well, I'm, a, I'm from a village just north of Raven Rock, northeast of the Hollow Wood. Um, some of the foothills. And long before many of you were here, we were here. And like I said before, uh, I was not the fighter type. So I was sent to the Earth Elders. As a young boy, perhaps seven, eight, which is a very young for a dwarf. My parents, uh, they loved me, but they knew that I was, could not be a fighter in their, in their family. So I went off and found the Earth Elders, and they taught me about things of magic, things that you wouldn't know unless you saw them yourself, about how all of this magic that you use is something special and is something that's been taken care of by the Celestials before us and the Giants before us. And as, as the story goes, long after the Celestials have left this land, they, in, they, employed, they employed the giants to watch over and to caretake over this earth. And there's stories of large, large monoliths that sit in spires, that sit and give power to this land. But like many other things, corruption will take the absolute power and turn it into the evil. Well. My job is to make sure that all the things that give it power and protection of these ley lines that use all of this magic power, that we take care of it. And we were taught from the giants. We were a small artisan guild that we're not into war, because if you don't know anything about a giant, giants aren't always friendly. And dwarves kind of didn't have a great relationship with them, but they found an artisan guild that was all about building because we are builders. That's what we are. And they found us and they taught the earth elders the way of protection, defending and rebuilding these ancient ruins, these temples for all religions. And of course, the spires that sit on the ley lines. So that's what I do. I use the ley lines to give me my direction in this world, and I have come been sent to Raven Rock because there are things that need building, and there are temples that need working on. I've been here for about a year, I imagine, and I'm not a city folk, but I've learned how to get used to it. I've get a lot of odd looks from a black wolf walking in town, so Kodra stays at home for most of the day unless I need her help at at the site. So here I am learning about my craft and hoping that one day I'll get to go out in the woods. I speak Sylvan because out in the woods you need to because you run into Fae, but I myself have never gone on an adventure myself. I've always been in a small group. So hopefully I'll get to go on my own and do something good for this world and protect the magic that exists in it. All right. So, so you've, you've come to Raven Rock and you've been here a year and I'm thinking that because you were assigned here mm -hmm. that, uh, we need to have, I mean, maybe a tie, like, um, I'm thinking maybe if there's that, something in town that I would be, I mean, there's temples in town, I'm guessing, right? Well, yeah, there, there is a large called the temple of the five, mm -hmm. which, uh, basically has shrines for each of the pentacle gods. Yeah. So that would be something. Or if there's um, a ley line or something or something around that. Well, what I'm thinking of, like, a, um, maybe you've made, you know what, maybe there was a previous 
uh, the existing Earth Elder guy mm-hmm. that's been here. Maybe he's old, much older okay. that you were told to, you know, study, meet, under, him. study under him. So like he's a, he's a much older, older dwarf. Right. Um, maybe we can flesh him out. Okay. You can do that. And then, so basically I'm an apprentice at this point. Um, so we need to, yeah, we'll get that. So that way you have at least, you know, somebody that you know in town. Cause I'm trying to think of how I, I can think of how you can get tied in based on the initial hook. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like that. Yeah. We don't have a lot of crossover. Like you don't actually sure. know somebody. So how would, how would you have met and had any sort of rapport with Tommy? It sounds like you guys are very different people. Yeah. I live North of, like I said, a small, but so we've known about Raven Rock. It's the biggest town here. So it's, it's, we've been there. And of course, um, Dwarfs and humans in Raven Rock, we, that's, you know, there's not, there's it's definitely more heavily human, but it's not like seeing a dwarf would throw you off. I don't know. I mean, oh, no, there's plenty of dwarfs. Yeah. I, I, I would say that perhaps my materials for building probably come from the docks or shipped in such things. I mean, I don't know how much stone is around here, but you know, certain materials and labor I would need. Perhaps I would employ the dock men they're, 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 to I, try to get stuff. I do speak Dwarvish too, so it could be that, well, Dwarvish, but I know it's... Call, called Ethi, yeah. Call, yeah, I do speak that, so maybe I was sent over to be the exchange agent for that. So are you, are that, okay, so kind of back up, you're thinking that you don't, you don't, you're thinking you don't live in Raven Rock now? I do now. No. Okay. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You moved I was there. sent from the Earth Elders yeah, to, right. to be here. And this is kind of like, it's kind of like your priest would have your parish, right? Yeah. So this would be my location to take care of things that need tending to as far as building. Because, well, if it's built by a dwarf, it doesn't fall apart. But humans love to destroy. So my job is to rebuild and to take care of it. So. Right now, I'm a very young, you know, in the in the group. So it's I'm just an apprentice. I'm learning these kind of things, and perhaps from a you know a, a master. I've been taught from a master stone cutter, and I was I was sent down there to the docks to get like materials because I imagine we'd have to have materials for rebuilding, not just anything that's there. And I don't know what kind of shipyards look like. We're on a river, right? Yeah, I mean it's not really sh- like. Not shipyards, right. but there's some basic docks. Right, and, so I'm yeah. giving me materials from other places that we can't get them here, like yeah. wood and st- stuff like that. And maybe I'm just was assigned to go down there and get to set up the. Shipment. So so Raven Rock is a big exporter mm-hmm. of uh, red clay. Okay, like that's there's a there's a huge red clay deposit. Okay, and so there's uh, some big kilns here in town. Mm-hmm. They make pretty infamous bricks. That get exported, sure, uh, and logging. There, there's some logging export. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not a huge, a huge business, just because they continually have trouble, like really logging as much as they want to, because they're right. very regulated sure. or interfered with by the Fay. But there, there is some logging, and then outside of that, the largest known commodities of the area are, are uh, g- uh, sheep and goats. Okay. So that that's the thing. So probably the the clay, the sure. red clay would be a big tie in. Since then you since you brought yeah. up the clay and you're doing the clay in your sure. hair and stuff. Yep. It, so it would probably be like the local red clay then. Right. All right. So that's pretty interesting. So you've at, least, that works for you. you've at least met Tommy. I think let's flesh it out. I think uh I think I know how we're gonna get started then. Okay. So we will we'll be starting off, I think, with Tommy and uh I'll give you guys separately a little bit of, of backstory on, so this this other dwarf will flesh him out, and I think it's going to be a little domino thing. So it, yeah, I feel I feel good about it. We're not going to do the start in a bar and whatever. I mean, there's going to be a logical reason why you guys are going to be doing on this first quest. Not every tavern, not every adventure starts in a tavern. No, no. Mm. A lot of them do though. Yeah, yeah. they do. I mean, easy, okay. Easy pickings. All right. I, yeah. I mean. Not as many ties together as 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 uh, had in the past, but I think it'll work. All right. 
All right. Well, do you guys have any other questions for each other that you think you really, as far as characters want, kind of answered before we do session one? I mean, I kind of want to be in the position of if I not like these three know each other, the Fae, but I don't know them. So I, I kind of like more of like learning to get to know them in game versus pre, I don't want to pre-existing ideas sure. of oh. what they are. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, know Tommy, Kodra loves Tommy for some reason every time I bring Kodra down to the dock. I think it's the fish. Smell. No, yeah. except <laughs> everybody loves Tommy. Well, when, we, when we're talking about languages, just, just and I realize mm-hmm. I, there's all sorts of funny names, and yeah. these are things you just will pick up as we go. Yep. I'm not going to do I mean, you've had some reading material, and but you mentioned your languages. Yes, because um, I am a teacher's pet. <laughs> so you had said so Sylvan is the elvish tongue. Right. Okay. Yep. Just make sure you, you And you, giant. Okay. So, so you, I, I'm Sylvan. not Sylvan not like um I don't know if it's still considered because I know that the elves in this are very wood woodsy. They are. <laughs> they so are I don't um, know if that language is spoke by also the Fey or understood. Nope. No, nope. no, they there's no. not a lot of I mean how do they feel about the elves? I guess we'll find out. Because they build like their cities in the woods. Well, they do. They they tend to be like so. The Hollowood is very much more of a fey a fey wood. Mm-hmm. Um, so the elves have like really vast vast tracts of wood mm-hmm. where their their main civilizations are vast tracts of land. Vast tracts I mean, of land. So there's not really an elven community here. Okay. Um, ha- had we had a group of people wanting to be elves. Sure. I probably would have rewritten that, but sure. I, I had already kind of written that this is a more of an elven or more of a fae place. Okay. So like the, 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 the local races predominantly just, so we've got the fae in the wood. We've got a human dwarf mix in the town, predominantly human. Uh, we've got the atrali, which are the otter people. They have a holt, uh, which is like a, where they, they all kind of live in a little yep. village, just a few miles from town. I think it's like five miles from town. There's a riverboat that their Holt owns that provides service from Raven Rock to Kingsbridge okay. and, and actually beyond. Uh, we'll get more into that, so don't, don't worry about too much. So, so there's the Atrali. Uh, so, Tommy, you work with the Atrali. I'm actually going to incorporate some of this stuff because we had, we had made some other characters previously. And so, like, you do know one named Skiplop. I'm going to like that's part of the world. Okay. Um and peace. If that if that's okay with you. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. I do also speak Otic. So mm. Yeah, I and I definitely I I don't know where all the stories are going to take us, but I I love the Atrali and I think that they're going to be you know, beings that we interact with. There's there's not much in the way of trolls in the town. There, there is a troll community way up in the the hills and they don't really come into town. And you would have, um, I say you, <laughs> Matt, your character would not have had a lot of, I mean, at this point, probably no interaction with them. And they, I don't really talk to many people. Um, there is a singular troll who lives in town mm. named Halor. Mm. That's okay. Yeah. He's, and he has a little magic shop. Mm-hmm. So as far as the trolls go, not a lot of troll presence. Um, definitely. I mean, the hollow wood is pretty massive from it's big. Look at the map. Yeah, here, it's, right? it's, it's quite large. Yeah. Um, and, as, and we don't like from the society part, as far as our culture, like Rave Rock, there's, is there like a lot of stories? These have not been traveled by a whole lot of the humans in there. I'm guessing with the amount of fae that are kind of fae controlled that there's parts that you talk about the fae that don't, don't go into. But, I mean, the humans, are they welcome? It doesn't sound like they're that welcome into the woods or that far into it. Well, so the hunters, the hunters kind of know, figured out where it's safe. You, you, I mean, you don't go too deep because obviously there are sure. natural dangers, bigger and bigger creatures and things like that. Right. The fae tend to be more pranksters. Uh, and it depends on what they're doing. Yeah. I'm trying to just get an idea of what's the preconceived like trope of the fae in town what what do we think of them what are the stories about them they they are 
I don't think the people would be fearful of them for the most part. They, they're they wary of them because they see them as troublemakers. I mean, more than one hunter has told a story of waking up around the remains of a small fire without his pants and a, a hangover and sure. some vague memories of crazy dancing and drinking with a bunch of fawns. Like, you like, like, like it's, hmm? Do you need leprechauns? There's no leprechauns. Mm-hmm. There's there are chorids though. Mm-hmm. Those are the wild haired sure. oh, little, yeah, yeah, little yeah. dudes. Um, nice hair. So yeah, and, and there's I mean there are there's a lot. I mean, fae, there's not just one fay, right? right? They're they're the the friendlier fay who tend to be they they're they're fascinated by humans mm-hmm. and they they can be they can be troublemakers. They can be helpers. Sure. And then there are some malevolent fay, like will o wisps. You know, if you yep. go into the swamps, they they're the ones that will lure people to their death. So. Humans, you know, the when we inter- when we introduce these fae, they're gonna be, it's gonna be, oh wow, there's gonna be, there should be some some wonder, some surprise, but if they see a fairy, they're not gonna be fearful. It's gonna be more like a little bit of gawking, and the same with the fawns. Fawns are known as you know they know that they're revel revel revelers. Can't say the word today. Partiers. Yeah. Um. But they definitely don't just normally wander the streets. Okay. And have I heard of any news from the elders about anything goings on outside of town? Have I heard whispers from my... I mean, as far as what? Just like you said there were certain parts of the forest that you guys are they're staying away, a kind of dark area. Is there, you know, basically if I'm, I'm thinking of like based upon, I'm trying to think of, so I kind of fleshed out the idea of, the earth elders what they're protecting is there anything major right now that they're not or are they keeping that out of a loop of a small nobody because we're a dwindling right group and we're not really taken seriously by a lot of people we're just seen as construction guys basically you know so well, we gotta, I mean, someone's got to watch the rocks the, i mean right? there are some points of interest yeah. in in this area which i mean it was interesting that you chose that mm-hmm. backstory there's a lot of a lot of the things you guys Ooh, well, we're getting this feedback. Well, that... No, it was, I heard a... Yeah, I heard it too. I wonder mm-hmm. if somebody's phone was buzzing. All right, well, it went away. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more. I mean, we kind of talked about this, this interesting windmill mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's, in the, that's in the veil um, that, you, that you know definitely has some leyland properties and you've okay. probably gone to see it. And there's the... I mean, there's the world pillar, which is like 250 miles away, which, I mean, yeah, as a quest thing, you would sure. definitely love to go see that, but it's, it's, on, very, my bu- it's, very, it's on my bucket list. It's very dangerous. So. On my bucket All right. Well, I mean, I think we're, I think, I feel like we have a good starting point. I'll probably send each of you a few little notes and stuff. And then when we start session one, we will just jump in, jump in. Sounds Ooh. good to me. Sounds good. All right. Well, this was our. Session, session session zero. Um, that's kind of what I imagine some session zeros go for. A lot of times, we would make characters at the table together, but that's really not. That would be the worst recording experience ever. <laughs> so, we're gonna we're gonna call that uh, call that a wrap, and uh, looking forward to getting started on the campaign. Yay! So Yay. thanks everyone. All right. All right. All right. See you soon. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our show and want more, please leave us a rating and review on whichever platform you use. And of course, feel free to share us on social media. We'll be back next week with more adventures in the world of TELUS. To tide you over, you can read more about the cast, characters, and the world of TELUS at AdventuresEdgeRPG.com. And if you're headed out on your own adventure, don't forget to bring a 10-foot pole.